Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel for another Tools Day. And today I've got a tool that is brand new. I've never seen anything like it. And it's supposedly gonna replace all your other metal cutting tools and it's gonna do it better, faster, cleaner. So if you've watched the channel, you've seen us use something like this. This is a double cut shear. It's got two cutters, one on each side. So it's like a double scissor, right? Problem with this is it does leave like a thin strip of material, which you'll see here in a little bit. And then we've got nibblers. Nibblers, they're really effective for rib cutting. So going up over profiles, they're not great for long runs because they are a lot slower than a double cut shear and you get a lot of debris. The little niblets, that's what I call them, or little moon, metal moons that come out of the bottom. And those are really dangerous because they can get in your shoes and dogs paws, all that stuff. So luckily we use a Milwaukee now and the Milwaukee has the little collection bag at the bottom. So we don't have to worry about that. That's why the Metabo basically sits at home. To be honest, the, the Milwaukee's a lot better. I just don't have all these tools that I use because they're in my job site. And then obviously we have hand snips, which are the, the tried and true method of cutting all metal, right? Not always the cleanest cut, but you can get pretty good at it. So the tool we're talking about is this right here. This is, I don't even know how to pronounce this. Wachtel, Wachtel, Jetco. We're gonna say it's the Jetco panel cutter. And it's a unique design. I've never seen something like this. Um, maybe I'm just sheltered, but they're calling this uh, perfect for metal roofing, lath, cuts roofing, gutters, HVAC, metal and composite. So maybe they're referring to vinyl siding. Maybe you can cut vinyl siding. Uh, smooth cuts, no sparks, no burrs, long battery life, it is battery powered, and cutting wheels, those are made of tool metal, which is, I'm assuming like, you know, your tooling metal that is punch and die stuff, so it's gonna last a really long time. Two speed transmission, reverse switch, variable speed trigger. So this is the tool that we're gonna talk about today, and we're going to open it up run it through a couple materials and we'll kind of compare the difference and you guys make the decision because I have no experience with this. I don't really know if it's gonna be good or not. And uh, it's just cool. It's, I love new tools. I'm a metal guy, so we do a lot of metal cutting. And if there is something that's gonna work better, obviously I'm gonna want it. And I know a lot of you will as well. So one thing I did know is that it, like I said, it comes with a battery. This is a 20 volt max DeWalt battery. So. I've got this DeWalt battery right here and it's gonna work. So that's kind of a nice thing if you're in the DeWalt platform, you don't just have to buy their, their batteries. You can use your DeWalt and you can even charge these on a DeWalt charger. So that is kind of a nice thing. I don't know what they had to pay to license uh, the battery technology from DeWalt, but it's kind of an interesting feeling tool. Uh, the weight is all right about in this region here. You can see this metal construction. The, uh, the cutter wheels are pretty heavy duty feeling. They've got some serrations, which I'm assuming are going to be helping with not slipping through your metal cuts. Just like, really it's just like a pair of snips. One side has usually got some serrations and the other side is smooth. So that's kind of my first impressions. The actual body you know, I mean, it's it's not like premium quality with rubber bumpers and everything, but it does feel fine in the hand. You can see here the two-speed trigger, or sorry, the two, yeah, it's a two-speed switch, I would say. This is the variable speed trigger. And we've got a, I'm assuming a lock on or off, and then a reverse and forward. So pretty simple tool guys. There's not like a ton to talk about. It does go, I don't know if I said this, up to 24 gauge material. I don't ever use 24, sometimes maybe standing seam, but I do have some 26 gauge metal, some 29 gauge metal, some flat metal. I've got uh, some mesh I was going to cut because it talks about doing lath. So let's go ahead and set up a couple demos and we'll kind of compare these and then you guys can make the decision if this is something that you're interested in. It's $395. They have, I don't know where they sell it other than their website specifically. That's where, that's where I got this from, is from them specifically. So $3.95 and I think they got like a little promo going on where you can save 20, up to 20 bucks on shipping or something. I just noticed that when I checked it out. So I'll drop the link down below, obviously. No affiliate or nothing. 
If you like it, go out and buy one, give it a try, but let's cut some material and see if it's any good at all. All right, we'll go ahead and give uh, some flat metal. This is 29 gauge flat metal. And obviously we all know snips. It's a lot of physical work, but definitely doable. You can make a pretty nice clean cut. And it's a snip, right? It's probably the least desirable way to make your cut if you're doing a lot of production. We've got double cut shears. Ooh. You know what, there might be a reason that I brought these back to the, the shop and don't have them on the job site. So with a double cut shear, when it works, it does a pretty good job. You usually get a clean cut on both sides, but you're left with this curly cue that uh, is just completely scrap. And then we've got nibblers, which are more noisy, you're gonna see, and they're a little bit slower and you're gonna see the debris. So these are about dull, hence why these are also back here. No sense, we're gonna use them in Milwaukee's for now on anyway. And you get the debris. These are a bunch of those little uh, moons that didn't get quite cut all the way, so that's why they've still remained connected. But obviously you can see that's the common ways that we've been cutting. And now let's go ahead and give the Jetco panel cutter. We're gonna go in two speed right away and just rip this thing. Let's see what happens. Hello? That was fast. Okay. I think we're gonna agree that speed is this guy's best friend. Cut wise, I mean, this side is kind of, it's not nearly as good as the double cut shear, but it's not bad, but it's very hard to control. I noticed it really is hard to, it wants to go all over the place. Let me get, a, let me get something a straight edge. Let's draw a straight line and we'll see how, see if I can main an actu maintain an actual straight cut. Let's just go ahead and make a straight line here real quick. Okay, here we go. Now the nice thing is this is variable and I can feel that. So I can kind of start it nice and slow. Okay, I mean, you can see my black line, maybe. I did a pretty good job. It's pretty darn close, but is a little bit difficult, which I'm assuming like anything, you're gonna get better. Ooh, I just reversed it on accident. So you can hear me going in the variable speed, but that makes me able to do a really nice clean cut. If I'm full, if I'm full speed, I don't think I could ever make a nice clean cut. Let's try it here. But holy cow, this thing is fast. Yeah, okay. That's probably not gonna happen. So I think accuracy and speed and this tool probably aren't gonna go together unless you're really experienced. Uh, you're not gonna pick this tool up and make a straight cut. Whereas these, you can make a pretty darn straight cut because they don't go that fast. Now, I don't want a tool that's just going to cut flat metal. Flat metal is not what I deal in all the time. Specifically, they claim to be able to cut through uh, wire mesh and lath. This is about all I had is some chicken wire. And yeah, I can, I can use my snips, kind of a pain, make all my cuts. I don't even know if I can use a nibbler. Yeah. Doable, kind of a pain. It's putting a bunch of shavings and I don't even, I'm not even gonna try these. I don't think they're gonna work. Well, okay, we'll try it. Yeah, that's, that's not really what that's for. And then we've got the panel cutter here. <laughs> oh, 
That's actually satisfying. I'm gonna do another one just for the heck of it. Okay, that's fast. And I'm assuming you're never gonna be worrying too much about quality when you're doing any sort of mesh work or netting. So that's awesome. Something I was curious about though was Whenever we do, this is a steel soffit. We don't use aluminum soffit. We use steel soffit on our projects. And typically a nibbler is super slow, causes a lot of mess. You can do it. But getting through these doubled up bends here in the soffit piece is actually a pain. So we resort to just hand snipping the soffit whenever we have to cut it down into fitting a size. And when you go through your ribs, it can get a little bit messy. It's not bad, but it takes a lot of time. I'm curious how this is gonna do. Um, let's give it a try. Now, I think I could do it. I think it's very hard to control it going up and over these ribs. Okay, so that's actually, that's actually not bad because a lot of times we're up on the job site, lift, doing soffit, and you just hand cut and eyeball this anyway. And to be honest, that's also, it was kind of a pain, but once it's up in the soffit and you put your, your fascia over it, this little bit of maybe uh, deformation that you get going up and over these ribs, I don't think I'd ever see it. I don't think it would be an issue. Um, I think this is a viable option for something like this too. So the last thing that I wanna do is cut some panelized steel. So the, the steel that you're gonna see on roofs and sidewalls of our buildings and a lot of people's buildings, um, because I think that that would be where, ooh, look at this, this is cool. So this is kind of stuck in here. We're gonna go ahead and hit the reverse button. Boom, pull it right out. I didn't think I needed the reverse button, but it just hit me on why I would. Uh, but what I was saying is paneled roofing, classic ribbed, how is that gonna do? Because if this is good to cut my angles, like up my gable ends, when I have to cut my side steel, instead of a nibbler, which is slow, but does a really good job, this might make it to the, the trailer. So let's get a piece and set that up and clean all this out of the way. Okay, here we have 26 gauge ribbed metal. This is what we'll put on a roof or a wall. And obviously we can take our snips and we can cut all this. It's very daunting and you're not gonna get a clean cut. It's just not gonna happen. So. Some people will use a shear. Once again, it's a horrible way to do it. Because right when you go to get into the rib like this, it almost stops and just does a bunch of damage. So that's where the nibbler comes into play. because I can go up and over ribs, profiles, no problem. So, will the panel cutter make it over? And I know, Kyle, why aren't you wearing gloves? Well, what do you wanna do about it? I don't have mine, I'm sorry. Here we go. Okay, I gotta try something. We're gonna use my bent, my bent Milwaukee track. This is gonna simulate going up over the ribs on a gable piece that's angle cut. We're gonna see how good we can follow that line.
Okay, that's my second time going over a rib panel. Obviously I have some experience cutting metal, but that is more impressive than I actually thought it was going to be. I didn't think that this was gonna be able to go over the ribs very well without doing more damage. Um, I'm impressed. What do you guys think? Because this is all new to me. I actually am formulating in my mind what I think about this tool. Other than the fact that I thought kind of it looked a little bit gimmicky or cheap, um, it's probably because it's made by a company that doesn't put out power tools every day. They did at least do it right, I think, by using a big manufacturer's battery and went with a battery powered tool instead of a corded tool. We all know the job site is not corded anymore. It's cordless. Um, and it performed really good on flat steel, on lath. Um, I know it was kind of like chicken wire, but still, it, was, it blew away all the competition in speed, accuracy and quality. Well, accuracy is the thing that I think will come with time. Quality, I think it did a really good job. It doesn't, it doesn't leave any, you know, actually it, it leaves like no burrs. It's very easy to touch without gloves. Uh, if you're dumb enough not to wear gloves when cutting metal. And so, yeah, it does a really good job, guys. I'm gonna leave the link down below. I'm not telling you to go buy it. I have no experience on longevity, on warranty type stuff. I just know that it works pretty good, better than anticipated. And with that, we're gonna go ahead and get out of here. If you liked it, hit the thumbs up. Maybe subscribe if you haven't already and you wanna see more content. And let me know down below in the comments. Is it crazy to spend $400 on a tool that might 10x your productivity every time you have to cut metal? Maybe.